We got some mountain goats on Bald Mountain. Well, good morning, everybody. We are right on Highway 150. This is uh, Bald Mountain. So the Bald Mountain Pass is right there. And we are going cross country. I suppose people are starting to figure out that clay on the trail isn't on the trail very often. We are actually going up over this ridge right here into the Murdoch Basin. We are going to go to Blizzard Lake, uh, Joan Lake, and Jim Lake. Way shorter in both time and miles than driving the Murdoch Basin Road. We're just, they're just over the hill here. A uh, little more effort on your, on your body, but uh, the road to Murdoch Basin is rough, unless you have a four-wheeler, and even then it's rough. So uh, here again with Shad. Say good morning. Good morning. And we're, uh, we're off. So the berries are out again. There's a currant bush full of currants. They're still plenty bitter. We are just meandering through the bushes. There's lots of uh, cranberries up here too, but plants, but the berries have pretty well been picked off of them. I think the birds like them as much as I do. All right, so we got up here just a little ways. If you kind of hang south, you'll run into a pretty good sized boulder field. If you hang a little southeast, there's a way smaller stretch of boulders and it'll pop us up on top and there's a lot of this just big rock that's flat and easy to walk on. Yeah, so that was the worst of the rocks so far. The rest of it, there's lots of rocks, but you can just meander through them here and kind of stay on grass. And just work your way up between the little rock cracks. All right, this just goes from rocky section to little meadow section, and then the actual ridge here is a little bit of a boulder field. There's some big rocks here, though. I think we should be able to just kind of skirt up and ride on over. So once again, it always looks worse than it is. We had to climb up like, what, 20, 30 foot of boulders and then when you get up here there's a bunch of big flat rocks it's as easy a hiking as it gets like being on a sidewalk you just have to take steps over the cracks there is an awful good view up here though Okay, I'll give you guys the grand view from the other side here. Might be a little premature, but we are going to basically go down against this hill over here is Blizzard Lake. We'll drop down into Joan Lake, hit Gem Lake. There's two other ponds, little lakes that come over here and we'll probably come out right here and head right back out. Wish it wasn't so smoky though, the view here is absolutely beautiful and it's the smoke's killing half the view Waterfall. all right here's the first real good view of this other side this big lake down here is Joan Lake which is right above Echo Lake if you want to drive down into Murdoch Basin but the road is pretty treacherous pretty rough uh, we've been hiking for about 20 minutes and are within easy distance of it let me zoom in a little bit. Blizzard Lake sits right against this hill. I didn't have any luck fishing there last time, but there was tons of salamanders in it. 
and then there's a few ponds also back down to Joan then Gem Lake is just gonna sit right over the edge here and then there are two other small lakes just right up in this area here so we may uh, we're leaning towards skipping Blizzard Lake and just cruising straight down to Joan. I caught a fish in it last time. So I know we can have success there. All right, there's a look at where we've come. It gets pretty ledgy here and you just have to find cracks in the rock and just drop down. It's a totally beautiful day. It was a little windy up on the ridge, but man, nothing at all. And down here, there's no wind at all. Perfect. We are just you know, down climbing and making our way. So little bits of down climbing, little six, six, eight foot ledges. Man, the rest is just like stair steps and sidewalks. So we ledged ourselves out a little bit over here. We had to backtrack a little bit and beautiful rock formations. If you ever needed a place to hide out of a storm, that'd be a good one right there. But we've got down here, we can just jump down here. There's usually a lot of springs up against these trees, but I think we're or up against these cliff bands, but I think we're late enough in the air they're drying out. All right, so this last, last little stretch was just cliff after cliff, but we just found where the water was coming down and had to down climb a couple four or five foot um, ledges and the rest of it we could just kind of walk down. Last time I was here, there was a pretty good spring running right along the edge here and it was just the sweetest, freshest water ever. Um, dried up, dry as a bone right now. The, uh, I call it moose cabbage. I don't know what else to call it. Nature's toilet paper over there. It's even drying up because we're running out of water. Oh, so here's the spring I was hoping for. That is just dried up. Some more currants. The big fat ones are actually really good. The little skinny ones are bitter, bitter, bitter. But this had water in it not too long ago. The grass is still green. There's either moose or elk tracks in it, and actually the grass is, or the ground's still damp. Here's some bearberry. I see some blue in it, but that's just the flower. Shad's never tried the berries, and of course we're in a different location. I'm just not seeing any on this one. Here's one right here, Shad. So Shad is uh, trying these, and he said in the Wind Rivers, where he normally spends most of his time, they have a thing called Oregon grape there that are very similar. So they may be they may be related to each other, and we're just calling the same plant by different names. I'm for sure not a plant expert. Something I'm working on. Hey, you guys know me and ponds. I don't know what's so fascinating about them, but they're just so pretty. Especially as dry as it is up here to see a big good pool of water still is awesome. Kind of stagnant gross water at this point in time, but still pretty. All right, so if we acting like however we want to act today and we've changed our mind, we are headed to Blizzard Lake. We've only changed our minds a couple times so far. Ooh, uh, this is a pretty good sized pond just before Blizzard. Doesn't look like it has an inlet. 
possibly spring fed. And there is no outlet here. Oh, here's some more bear berries. Tons of berries on these ones. Um, so I doubt that there would be any fish in, in this pond. Uh, Utah DNR has changed their policy over the last couple of years. If a lake won't sustain itself and won't um, keep itself populated, they quit stocking them. Budget cuts affect everybody. It's still pretty. I don't see any sign of fish. There's no trails. Deer sign. All right, so here's the sign for Blizzard Lake. It just decided to sprinkle on us for, I'm guessing just a minute as that cloud over there passes by. Wasn't even a chance of rain and I know better than not bring rain gear, but I don't think it's gonna rain enough to hurt anything. And if it does keep raining, it'll go hide under a tree. It ain't gonna rain for very long. So this is super shallow right here. It looks like as we go around the corner, I don't know if it's just because the wind's blowing it or what, but it looks a little deeper over there, a little darker color. Okay, so there's either a cow moose and a deer or a cow moose and a calf up here. So I will be keeping my eyes out for that for sure. There was a pretty good trail coming around that side there. I figured people had been up here fishing, but it was all wildlife. No people tracks. And why I love to see moose in the wild, I like to see them from a distance. There's some dog tracks here. I don't know if they're coyote or dog. Some more. Let's see, there's the dog track. Yeah, there's a claws in it. It's dog. Cats scare me worse than moose do, and moose scare me more than bears do. I've only seen two bears in the Uinas, and really to call it in the Uinas was, is a stretch because they were just on the outskirts of the Uinas. I've never seen anything this high. So I watch a lot of videos where guys are hiking the Uinas and hanging bear bags and bringing bear canisters and it's good practice I'm not saying not to do it but up here it's a little overkill I think we've had a couple bear related deaths in the UNS but they are way lower usually at campgrounds we had a kid drug out of a tent on the Wasatch front oh years ago and it's Dad was able to scare the bear off. And the bear dropped the kid, but uh, they were not near the elevation we are right now. So I'm one of those stupid guys that sleep with the Snickers in my pocket. If I'm going to get eight, it's going to be a good show. But. Not very likely. So here's kind of the east side of Blizzard. I can't remember if it was this lake or the pond we were at right before here. Last fall, I saw a bunch of salamanders in. We're not seeing anything in it right now. Oh man, we found them again. We've been eating berries the whole trip here. I don't know what it is about these things, but I've fallen in love with them. 
Okay, so no fish in this pond, lake, but that's a salamander. Harder to see over there is another one. And right between the rocks is a little one. There's another one over here to the right. Not very often you see salamanders and fish in the same lake. I think the fish eat the salamanders, but at least that's been my experience. All right, so just over the hill 50 feet from Blizzard Lake is another little catch pond. We were gonna skip this other little pond and just head straight down to Joan Lake, but the contours of the land are telling us otherwise. So we gotta go over here to kinda catch a chute to drop down into it anyway, so we may as well check this other one out. But it's not very far away. Okay, so Shad just found a big old chunk of goat hair. We've been seeing little tracks. I just assumed they were deer, but apparently not. Oh, here's another big old fluff of it. Yeah, and there's trails all through here. There's not a whole lot of footprints in it. I've seen one boot print since we've been up this high. And the rest of these trails are all full of animal tracks. But here is the little pond just to the east. No, excuse me, south. South of Blizzard. Yeah, and they have, uh, look, there's a bed right there. Yeah. And all the grass is laid down. Ooh, and there's a sheep smell. So my guess is they're coming down from here for water and good feed because there's just not a whole lot of activity up here. Doesn't look like there's an inlet or an outlet to this lake. So I'm sure it winter kills and doesn't have anything in it. Okay, so here's our first view of Joan Lake really not far from Blizzard Lake or these other ponds, but there's a lot of elevation between them. So Shad just stepped on a wasp nest, not on purpose, but uh, he did the 20 yard sprint to get away from it. They don't seem like they're following us, but I'm not gonna hang out either. All right, here is Joan Lake. Sorry about the wind. I Sure, it sounds bad. This is a big lake for a Uinas Lake that doesn't have a road going right to it. So, this lake does get quite a bit of pressure though from Echo, which is uh, just down off the horizon line here. But Echo Lake doesn't get a ton because the road is so crappy to get to it. We've I've found anyway that it's just easier to walk over the way I came than drive the road. We can get within a quarter mile of this lake in a car, but it takes way more time and probably as much energy. Not good for your car. All right, and as always, mountain raspberries are out. They're a little harder to find, but we'll not look a gift horse in the mouth. So I'm not sure what these are, and I know better than to eat them, but there's another stash of raspberries. stash so we're gonna sit here and eat for a minute goat sound all right we hit a these are all raspberries this whole section right here I don't care if I catch a fish or not this has been a good trip all right Shad's on to his first fish little brook trout normal size for the Ewen is here. And he got it off a great big giant yellow beetle looking thing. Alright, so we're over on the little peninsula. This seems to be where everybody hangs out. There's quite a trail, there's quite a few fire pits. Little benches and stuff people have made to hang out.
I think if I ever backpacked here, I'd probably stay up above this, one of the other lakes, maybe Blizzard Lake, and then do this as a day trip. This is probably gets a lot of a lot of people here would be my guess. Well, I just haven't had any luck since. I had a fish jump out of the water 30 feet in front of me, but not interested in my fly. Shad's only caught the one. Had another hit. Hit his fly, but that was it. Oh, there's some little ducklings. We're going to sit down over here in the shade somewhere and eat a sandwich. And we'll keep trucking around the lake. We're only about a maybe a third around it as we are right now. We're kind of on the southeast side of it. So I'm not sure there's much more loyal than an Australian Shepherd or a Border Collie. They're just happy to be with you and know how to follow you when you tell them to. Okay, quick lunch and a quick nap on the rock. It was super smoky this morning and man, the wind's blown a little bit and look at nothing but blue sky and one little puffy cloud. Looks like somebody's come up here and built a little makeshift shelter under this fallen trees, but it's been years ago. So Shad and I have come to the conclusion that this lake, it is so deep, but only in the middle. The edges are so shallow, I think the fish can escape the heat by getting out in the middle and a fly pole just isn't the, isn't the thing to have here. But we're halfway across it, I'm guessing. Maybe we'll have more luck over here against some rocks or in the bay or maybe not maybe the the inlet stream i know had some fish in it last time maybe we'll do all right there all right so we've come to the outlet not a whole lot of water coming out of here but echo lake i believe it is is just down over the hill and again you can drive to it so we're not going to walk down there Alright, well there's the first fish we've seen in the water, but he is not interested in our flies at all yet. Shad's trying his big yellow and he white. He saw us. Oh, there he goes. Alright, so right here at the outlet, we finally saw some fish in the water, but I chunked my fly down in front of them and they weren't interested. Shad's going to try with his different one and we're just going to keep fishing this little bay right here. It seems to be the most promising so far. All right, well we've made it to the north side. There's a little cliff band over here. And we've been seeing the fish in the water. And we just changed flies to see if we can scoop them up, but we're on the wrong side now and I can't see in the water anymore. I didn't bring my polarized glasses. But at least we know there are some on the shore. Oop, and one just jumped right there on the point. And another one. I think that's where I'll head. <laughs> so, did we slip on a rock or what happened? I missed my hand hole. Oh, Shad just went swimming. He fell. <laughs> it's not horribly funny to him, but I think it's hilarious. You have your glasses? Oh, where are my glasses? Did they fall in the water? Yeah, well, we'll spend a minute and see if we can put him back together. Oh, well, here's a little spot where guys are cooking fish. Guys luckier than us, I guess. We've kind of made it to the north 
side, there's this little bay here and then the there's a creek. I think it's going to be the inlet creek comes up here. We're going to fish it and head up to Gem Lake and then we'll see how we feel from there. Fish are rising, but they're rising out in the middle. They're not real close to shore and I'm not good enough of a fly guy to get my fly out that far. So here's a little meadow to the north. Had water in it not too long ago. In this little chunk of bay here. So last fall when I came up here, granted I was using a spinner rod, rod and reel, I only caught one fish and it was over in this next little bay. All right, so the last time I was here, I caught a fish standing off that log right there on the other side. I just actually had a fly take my fly, or a fish take my fly right over here, but it ran to shore. When it uh, took my line and I couldn't pull it in fast enough to get him set. So by the time I finally stripped enough line in, he wasn't on anymore. And I just hooked myself, but I got her free here. So we'll try here. At least I know my fly's working now. So this end of the lake, there's a big deep pool right here. And we've had fish just attacking our flies. I had one pull it under the water three times, but it just never caught him. Scummy little springy pond. We're gonna start heading up the uh, inlet here over here. It goes up this way and we'll take it up to Gem Lake and then probably head out for there from there. And it's been a blast. I'm gonna catch a fish before I go home. And some of these little inlet spots may be what I'm looking for. Of course, by the time I get close enough, I'm going to scare anything away that was in here. And Shad over there, not only is he a righteous rock climber and cliff diver, man, he's casting his fly like so far away. I can't that's my new goal. Oh, see, there's a nice fish right here. There's two of them in there. Let's see if they'll take some. So Shad just snagged another one out of the inlet. I'm going to see if I can go swimming too. It looked like Shad had so much fun. Sometimes you have to take chances. Oh. Log down here is big enough though to stand on like a sidewalk. Whew. We'll see what's in here. All right, so it just dawned on me that fish that I had that I couldn't strip the line in fast enough to actually set him. I think I did actually set him, but he took the hook off my like the tip of my hook. So I had another fish over here grab my fly three times and drag it underwater. And I couldn't figure out why I couldn't catch him, but my fly doesn't have a hook on the end of it. Just the eye. So I didn't bring my glasses and I can't see the thread, of the line through the eye. So I'll grab Shad here and throw another fly on it and we're gonna jet on up to Jim. All right, there is a spring coming out of here. A little waterfall above us. I love to get a drink.
So last time when I came up here for some reason, I just forgot what I was doing when I got here and I missed Jim Lake. But it's only a couple hundred yards from uh, Joan Lake. Man, it looks beautiful. Hopefully not quite as traveled as Joan. I'd love to catch a fish I could actually bring to shore. I've had a lot of them try and then I snagged two little teeny fingerling fish out of that little creek coming out of there but by the time you get them lifted out of the water they weren't big enough to actually be on your hook. We did see a fish jump in here, so we know there's at least one. I don't know if he's long, he just, his head is huge. Always fish. happens. Chad snagged another one. Holy mama, that's a good fish. I don't think he's as long as the ones you had up at up at Hayden, but that's a nice fish. He's, he's fat. He's a fatty. Well, today's been kind of a wash for fishing for me. Chad's done okay. The last tiger he caught was really nice. Fat, anyway. Just looking at the train here, we got quite a climb ahead of us. I've never been up this far. There's one more lake about the size of this one just in this next clearing, but we gotta be able to get out of here too. And there's a break in the rocks right there. I don't know. Shad's taking a nap. We'll go wake him and see what he wants to do. and the chipmunks like the bear berries too. He's chowing down hard. All right, this is the last of the bigger lakes. Oh, there might be. This is way bigger than I thought it was from first view. But this is the last of the bigger lakes that we're gonna hit on this trip. Uh, this lake's bigger than the last one and this one doesn't have a name. So, let's see if there's any fish in this and then we're gonna bail out of here. We just gotta find a break in the cliffs and head out. So the only thing I'm finding at this lake so far are raspberries. I think I've had a, over a cup of bear berries today. raspberries. Hey, there's a duck I just scared out of the grass. So here is the outlet of this last lake. I'm not seeing any sign of fish here. I'm not saying they're not here. I mean, I haven't caught a fish all day long that I got to shore anyway. But it'll, usually you can see them rising or something. I'm not seeing any anything in the outlet. Any sign of them rising in the water. comes my buddy. He decided to stay with Shad for a while and then he got all freaked out that I wasn't there. Well, my guess this is somebody's favorite place to go. Oh, 
that is a lot of effort. Benches, big tall fire pit for kind of an out of the way, no name lake. I'm guessing they had to build the fire pit up so high to keep the wind from blowing it out though. But I just haven't seen any sign of fish, which would be a big drawback to coming up here. I love to just get out and hike and do stuff, but when I go through all the crap of carrying stuff for fishing, it's a bummer when you don't catch anything. So there's all these little rock formations with a bunch of overhangs. It'd be a great place to get out of the weather. That one seems almost like it should go down further than it does, but it doesn't. People have just been chucking their garbage in there. Don't be like that, folks. Well, here's the last look at this lake. Uh, we are done fishing for the day. We are gonna find a crack in the uh, cliff band over here somewhere. And our goal is just to the left of this mountain right here is Murdoch Mountain. Okay, so we found a break in the cliff on that side, cliff on that side, and there's just a little drainage right here. It's lots of big boulders, but we're making it. All right. So, so far we're just climbing up a dry drainage and it's just big rocks. This isn't really the area for it, but I hope we don't run into a vertical dry waterfall. I think we're all right though. All right, well, this line isn't quite as nice as the last one. We kind of got to go up here or up here somewhere. Chad thinks he found a better line, but I'm just dumb. I'm just going to go right there. All right, well, that wasn't as bad as it could have been. It was that bad. I'm certainly out of breath. grouse. I know the sun's right in the lens, but yeah, the elk tracks in here are fresh, like there was some here, and we scared them off. They're all over. This is kind of weird terrain for the UN is not something you see all the time. I feel like we're in bedrock. The Flintstones. Hmm. But I'm not sorry I found this. Another shallow lake, Murdoch Mountain. Okay, there's one there. And one right there. And they're cooing to each other. And there's one, oh, right there. Oh, 
they're right here. There's goats right here. Come on up here. Keep the dogs back. Man, uh, wildlife up here is amazing. Yeah. It's a pretty secluded area. And they've obviously never been chased after. They weren't in a hurry to go anywhere. Ooh. Come on, Al, you got Come on, her. Right here. Come on. Come on, four wheel drive. You got her, bud. Boy. Come on. Oh, good boy. Hey, so we made it back out. We have to go up over this little ridge right here, and the highway's on the other side. All right, we made it up to the ridge. There's Bald Mountain. You can see cars up there. Bald Mountain Pass. And I can hear traffic, so I know we're going the right way. All right, we made it back to the truck. 6.34 miles. We must have started around 9, and it's like 6.30 now. Had a great trip. Running into the mountain goats was the highlight. Um, so thanks for coming along. If you like my videos, please give them a thumbs up. Uh, if you'll share them, subscribe trying to grow my channel out and I just appreciate all the help I can get. Thanks. All right, right above that grassy spot, right, or bushy spot right in the middle of the screen is three more mountain goats. We've just seen a dozen of them today. It's pretty awesome.